Hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, we have two different types of audience that comes to this channel. We've got people that want to watch things about ex Jehovah's Witnesses and activism, and then we have people that are interested in investment and possibly mental models, photo reading, speed reading, accelerated learning, the trivium, quadrivium, liberal arts, Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett types of topics. So I think um, there's a bridge between the two. Both want to be able to have freedom of mind, right, and freedom of thought, and to be able to elevate themselves above their circumstances, and to just have more freedom to have a better quality of life. So uh, having said that, we, I've been getting a lot of requests about people wanting to know how to use the Trivium. How do you use the Trivium? What do you do with it? Well, keep in mind, and these are mind maps here. These are visual notes. The trivium is both a field of knowledge and a tool and a technique to acquire the knowledge. It governs all communication, reading, writing, speaking, listening, and thinking. It is an instrument of all education at all levels because it is the art of communication itself. All right, so this is a very important thing. It affects you. What you learn with this is going to benefit you in so many areas in life. Your personal relationships, the way you communicate, the way you translate other people's communication. It's going to free you from a lot of things, unnecessary things. You're going to have clearer thinking. It's also going to shield you from people who might want to deceive you in certain ways or manipulate you in certain ways. You're going to be able to have some logic there. And I think ex Jehovah's Witnesses really need uh, a lot more logical learning than probably the the average person. But even in this day and age, uh, there's there's always room for some healthy logic because there are many many different distortions that we tend to have every day. All of us, no matter how great and perfect we are, grammar. And this isn't the kind of grammar that you're taught in school. This is a uh, a whole different kind of grammar. So if you haven't studied or learned about the trivium grammar. This is called the general grammar. The grammar that we had in school was called specific grammar, specific to English or specific to the language, whatever grammar that you learned it in. But this grammar is general and can be applied to all languages. So if you're somebody who speaks multiple languages, this is definitely something of interest in of itself because you're going to learn so much more about how to connect those languages together and it's just going to be a lot of fun. And then you have the part of rhetoric, how, how to communicate all of this. For example, with persuasion in, in sales settings. So this will help you in sales. It'll help you if you're someone who is looking for a job. You're going to have to sell yourself, your rhetoric, okay? You're going to um, be able to have a lot more advancement and empowerment in that. Uh, classical liberal arts of grammar, logic, and rhetoric. This is the wooden version. It's a little bit different than um, Sister Miriam Joseph, and don't let the title, I mean the author fool you. This isn't a religious book, although every once in a while she likes to throw her uh, her thing in there, Bible scripture too, but um, you know, uh, if, if you can just ignore the couple of scriptures here and there, if you're not into it, you know, the um, I think the trivium body of work that she describes here is just really a load of gold. And like I said, this one's a little different. It presents it a little different. It has also poetry and prose in here. But once again, it starts you off with the all-important connection, which is numbers. Before we had words, all the cultures had a sense of numbers. And as you can see here, here is where the first inklings of language start with, of course, petroglyphs and, and images, drawings, cave drawings of buffalo and different animals that were hunted, uh, I assume. And then they evolved gradually, as you can see, into what is a letter. As you can see here, all the way from here, this looks like a, an ox or a bull's horn right here. And as you can see, this looks like a U. The horns kind of do look like a U, and you can trace it back to certain kinds of images. Now, this is definitely like a U right here, as you can see. And so we take these languages and these letters that we have and numbers and symbols from our everyday reality. This is how the reality of the ancients, of our ancestors, was 
they didn't have cities, they didn't have Walmart, they had to go hunt for their food. So these were important things in their lives, you see. And then from there, let's see, you're going to have categories and terms. You have to be able to differentiate things, to compare and to understand. Language can communicate both thoughts and emotion. Right? So then you have these different categories. And then, as you can see here, the letters evolved to corresponding numbers. And numbers were here before we had the actual letters. In fact, the words and names actually began with numbers. And when you're talking about mental models, okay, when you're talking about mental models, the most abstract mental models are from 1 to 10. These transcend, they're universal. They transcend to all cultures. Because some, some of the Charlie mental models, some of the Charlie Munger mental models, um, some of them, the more specific they become, the more specialized they have to be for a specific area of business or industry, right? But the more abstract you go, the more general you go, the more universally they can be applied. So when you go to, to the absolute numbers, 1 through 10 or 0 through 9, and you now have certain kinds of meanings attributed, like to the number one, unity is attributed, or the source of all. Philosophically, you could attribute the correspondence as God or the, the monad. And from there, you have two, which could be a correspondence to that as duality or polar opposites or male-female dynamic, yin-yang. And it goes on and on. Three, the triangle is rising above the two polar opposites, rising above the uh, situation or synthesis. Or you could even, in communications, you could symbolize the triangle as conflict resolution. So you have all these different meanings attributed to the numbers, which corresponds to the letters, which, once again, as far as the trivium is concerned, you have a tool here to acquire knowledge. And the reason I'm showing you these correspondences to these particular fundamental concepts of 1 through 10 is because there's only 10 basic fundamentals to learning the, uh, the trivium. And once you've got that, you're, you know, you're, you're going to have the foundation, you're going to have the big picture right away, and you're going to be able to tie those with the car through the correspondences to all kinds of different categories, number, geometry, music, ge uh, cosmology, and from there, when you're dealing with numbers, you can pare that down to more specific applications like budgeting, finance, investing, making money, growing money, saving money, you see, and things like that, or even um, hobbies like art. Once you understand these principles, you're going to have so much of an easier time picking up new skills. This one here is called Learning How to Learn, and by the way, we might be covering a lot of books, but if you're not into photo reading, check photo reading out because uh, the main audience this is geared towards is the uh, photo reading mental model community. And this is not speed reading, although it goes well with speed reading, but it's just simply a, uh, a quick and efficient way to absorb large amounts of information. All right, so back to uh, this, learning how to learn. This is by Dr. Memory, Jerry Lucas. And... Memory is basically about making connections. Now, he has different types of systems where you're connecting sound alike words, so words that sound alike or consonant number systems. He also has the peg word system where you're linking different types of um, ideas. You have the associative link system, anagrams, things like that. So basically what I'm showing you this for is to let you know that memory is basically built on connecting different kinds of correspondences, meaning things that are meaningful to you. So this is how you learn best. This is how you absorb new information and knowledge best is through those connections. And that's what I'm helping you to do is to make some new connections with this idea and the concept and this new tool, the Trivium, because it is the thing that governs all communication. 
All right, so having said that, there are 10 basic concepts to the trivium. You can count them on both hands. Substance, quantity, quality, relation, action, passion, when, where, posture, habiliment. So in order to get into those parts, you're going to need this book here, the Trivium, the Liberal Arts of Logic, Grammar, and Rhetoric. And once again, don't let it, don't be turned off by the fact that a Catholic nun wrote this. This is not a Catholic book. It's the Trivium. But uh, within that section, you're going to have, within that book, you're going to have a section that will detail more on the meaning of these things. And these things correspond to uh, a lot of different principles found in other cultures. One of the ones that I discovered was the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. You have ten major sephiroth, is what they call it, or energy, divine energy centers, or universal cosmic energy centers. And these are their names, Keta, Chokma, Bina, Chesed, Gibura, Tiparet, Netza, Hod, Yesod, Malkut. I hope I'm pronouncing them right. And to these principles, I've connected other ideas, such as unity, crown, the still eternity, the source, or what some might call God. And remember, I'm not saying that this means God. What I'm saying is there's a correspondence to the idea or the meaning, okay? And these might not necessarily be your meaning. You might have other things that pop into your mind, and you're welcome to make a chart of that as you study, as you go through this, because you're going to be able to take this into everyday principles. Because once you have a feel for what these meanings are on a personal level, you're going to experience them. In your relationships, you're going to be able to spot cycles and patterns of behavior within yourself, within others, you see. And these will give you a chance to be aware of things that you can work on to better yourself. And of course, you're going to become super aware of how other people around you can better themselves, you know. It's always easier to see how someone else has made a mistake than it is to see how you or I might need to work on something. But in any case, it's going to give you a lot more self-awareness. You're going to be taken a lot more serious because your communication overall, not just on the surface, you're not just going to use better vocabulary or better grammar, but on a much deeper level, on a much unspoken, deeper communication level, people are going to respect you a lot more because of this, you see. And you're going to have a lot clearer, a much clearer communication between you and other people. So um, go ahead and uh, check that out. Um, let's see, I recommend this book. Did I show it to you already? Where'd it go? Here we go. Photo readers. If you want to do some syntopic reading, you can get into the uh, symbolic meanings of numbers. And it shows you some really awesome ways how the uh, numbers are represented in geometric shapes all around the universe, all around Earth, even in our architecture, even in, in nature, in art, in music, in our psychology, even in our growth patterns. It's really interesting. So um, this is another book to check out. It has a, oh, see now, Ex Jehovah's Witnesses, I tell you this one here. You see this? You recognize this, right? This is yud heh vav -Heh, supposed to be the, um, the inaccurate, quote-unquote, Jehovah. Well, this section here might be of interest. It's page 92, and it has some interesting correspondences to that symbol. This is on the section of mother substance. So it presents it as even a formula for architecture. And, um, you know, there's some really interesting stuff on that. So um, this is a cool one to check out. Oh, there it is. You see, it looks like a, a person even. See, this is the head, and then this is the uh, arms. It's the torso, and then here's the bottom part, the legs. So you can pull this into uh, your personal relationships. It's going to improve your communication, your speaking, writing, listening. Also, um, if you're spiritually inclined, it can improve those types of communication. It can help you to uh, acquire and create new knowledge. So check out these books, the Trivium. And if you have any more questions, um, well, this is the Quadrivium, but if you have any more questions, feel free to let me know. Till next time.